Welcome to Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. Today we have another channel video directory for you. This idea was inspired by the gift sets of the 1950s and 60s where model companies would group together different model kits by theme. And today we have escape systems. We have three videos from the early years of the channel. If you're new to the channel, you may not have seen them. The first is on ejection seats. Second is on escape pods and capsules. The third is on rocket sleds. The links to these three videos are in the title block below. So let's take a look. Part one is on ejection seats, a pivotal piece of equipment for pilot survival in high-speed aircraft. We'll talk about the development of the ejection seat from the early years, the first tests on into the Cold War era with the rocket seats and zero zero capability. We'll talk about how that uh, works and get into all the mechanics and engineering of the ejection seat. And no discussion of ejection seats would be complete without the great Martin Baker Company from the United Kingdom. They've been building seats since 1944, best in the world. And here we see the face behind the name. This is Sir James Martin on the right, accompanied by his faithful test subject, Dottie Hay. And a, a special shout out to Knee Dragon 1962 for providing that information. This was an actual ejection uh, from an F-8 Crusader in a Martin Baker Mark V seat in 1961 aboard the USS Franklin D. Roosevelt. The airplane uh, cheered the gear off on landing. Pilot made a zero zero ejection and uh, survived with a small abrasion on his neck from one of the straps. But a tremendous demonstration of the potential of these life-saving devices. We'll talk about why a Mach 3 airplane that can fly at 90,000 feet is equipped with an ejection seat. And we'll go even one better, a hypersonic rocket airplane that can go to Mach 6, also equipped with an ejection seat. The Douglas Escapac system, one of many by the uh, aircraft manufacturers around the world. This uh, seat evolved. It was used in the A-4 Skyhawk and the F-4D Sky Ray. And this uh, evolved into the ACES-2, a seat that came into use in the 1970s. And uh, that stands for Advanced Concept Ejection Seat, used in a multitude of Air Force aircraft to this day. We'll get into the engineering and details of the seat uh, this can go in mode one for takeoff uh, from initiation to full parachute in 1.8 seconds. And of course, the Zvezda K36D was demonstrated to the world at the 1989 Paris Air Show when pilot Anatoly, Anatoly Kvacher uh, ejected from a MiG-29 at 300 feet just two seconds before impact and survived without a scratch. Part two is capsules and pods. This concept was uh, evolved in the 1950s when uh, high-speed airplanes were approaching uh, speeds in excess of Mach 2. And the concept here was that the pilot would be protected uh, by staying inside the cockpit of the airplane, which would separate from the rest of the disabled aircraft. The first rocket plane to use this system was the Douglas D558-2 Skyrocket in the late 1940s. And when I say use the system, it was equipped with it. Uh, thankfully, it was never put into use. But the idea would be that the nose section would separate from the airplane. Pilot would manually bail out uh, using the ripcord of his parachute. The Bell X-2 uh, was equipped with a uh, similar system. The entire nose section would uh, separate from the airplane. You can see that here. And the idea, again, being that the nose would uh, drop to a lower altitude. The pilot would uh, uh, jettison the canopy and uh, bail out over the side. In September of 1956, Captain Mel Apt, seen seated in the cockpit, flew the Bell X-2 to Mach 3, uh, after which the airplane tumbled out of control. And he was um, Apt was able to separate the capsule, uh, but unfortunately wasn't able to bail out in time. And so the first and only operational use of a rocket airplane escape capsule ended in failure. This was a device uh, designed by Republic for the, believe it or not, the F-105 Thunder Chief was never used, but it was affectionately nicknamed the phone booth. And here's the Republic XF-103, uh, a concept that never made it past the mock-up stage, but it too was equipped with a capsule and uh, that was nicknamed the shoe. 
The Convert B-58 Hustler, world's first Mach 2 bomber, was equipped with escape pods. And here you can see uh, that. It was tested with both animal and human subjects and was uh, quite successful. The General Dynamics F-111 was equipped with a different system. The entire cockpit separated. It was called the Crew Escape Module, and this was used successfully as well. The XB-70, world's uh, first and only Mach 3 bomber, uh, flew in the mid-1960s. And this was the uh, escape capsule for uh, the pilot. We're going to take you inside the cockpit of the B-70 with Colonel Joe Cotton, and we'll explain all the details of that uh, escape system. Uh, this was actually used on uh, in June of 1966. Uh, the B-70 was in formation with other uh, General Electric-powered aircraft. And as you can see, the NASA F-104 at the right wingtip, uh, unfortunately and tragically collided with the B-70 and was rolled across the top. Uh, shearing the two vertical fins, which caused the B-70 to go into a flat spin and crash. And we'll explain how uh, the uh, capsules were uh, used by the crew. Uh, one was successful, one was not. We'll tell you that story. This is the uh, moment after the accident, after the collision. And sadly, NASA Chief Test Pilot Joe Walker was killed in the F-104. Part three is rocket sleds. And these were very uh, important devices uh, to prove uh, the concepts of escape systems, make sure that they worked before they were installed in the airplanes. Uh, the concept of a powered sled began in 1946 to launch captured German V-1 buzz bombs, uh, remanufactured here by Republic as the JB-2 loon seen on a track at Eglin Field in Florida. Today, we have a 50,000-foot-long hypersonic track at Holloman Air Force Base, New Mexico, which can reach speeds in excess of Mach 8. What we see here is an F-16 sled uh, that uh, goes to Mach 2 for testing the ejection seat of the F-16. Uh, other parts of the airplanes were tested on sleds as well. Here we have the tail section of the Grumman Jaguar, escape systems of the F-102, and even the, uh, pressure, the pressure suit uh, used by the pilots of the X-15 were tested on sleds to uh, determine if the wind blast would damage the suits at uh, high speeds. Here we see the track at Hurricane Mesa near St. George, Utah. And this is a unique rocket sled track because uh, sleds like this F-105 Thunder Chief would eject the pilot, but uh, at this tabletop Mesa, uh, the ejection would happen just before the sled hit the water break, and uh, it was the only place in the world where an ejection seat could be tested uh, with a pilot uh, having a full canopy and descending to the canyon below. And of course, we're going to look at the career of Dr. John Paul Stapp, Air Force Colonel and Flight Surgeon, who uh, rode sleds up to 100 miles an hour at a uh, slow speed track at Edwards Air Force Base, and he was determining the effects of deceleration on the human body. And from these tests came pilot survival, life support equipment, ejection seat uh, harnesses, and so on. Uh, he had a sled that uh, tested high G loads on the human body, and of course, Dr. Stapp named it the G Wiz. In December of 1954, Stapp rode a different uh, high speed uh, sled called the Sonic Wind built by Northrop, and he became the fastest man on earth, uh, riding the sled to 632 miles an hour, and then decelerating from that speed to zero in 1.4 seconds using the water brake system. During that deceleration for just a split second, Stapp pulled a max G load of 46, proving that the human body could endure that, again, for very brief periods, but he proved it. And a lot of his work was used in automotive safety in the 1980s and 90s, which led to much of the safety equipment that we have on every car on the road today. So the successful ejection rate in the 1950s, between 50 and 70 percent. The successful ejection rate today, 85 to 95 percent. And there you have it, a look at three episodes from early in the uh, channel's history on escape systems. And again, the links are found in the title block. We hope you'll enjoy these programs. 
And thank you for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. We appreciate having you on board. And please do hit the like button on the way out. That helps us with YouTube. Until next time, take care.